with August Fortero, everybody, you are most welcome to my channel. In today's lesson, what we will be doing is the Wild Rover. So this is an absolute banger of a tune, whether you're playing it live in a pub, um, part of an Irish cover, or even just a house party, it's brilliant for everyone to sing along with. Now, I'm gonna cover the chords first. You're going to need G, C, D, and D7. If you know those chords, skip ahead into the verse where we get into the strumming. So the chords, uh, we'll start with G. So it's the second box, A, third box, big E, and also the B and little E in box three. For the uh, C chord, it's the first box, B, second box, D, third box, A. For D, it's the second box, G and B, or G and E, third box B. And D7, it's like a reverse D. So you start off in box one on string B, then in the second box, it's G and E. Okay, now let's get into the verse of the song. So guys, for the verse, uh, we have four lines up here. Um, and the first two lines are almost the exact same as the second two lines. There's only one difference. But if we look at the first three lines, there's red chords at the end of those lines. So there is a reason for that. It's to change the atmosphere of the song. So if we add those chords in, it's gonna slow the atmosphere down and make it more of a sing song. While if we leave them out, it's gonna speed it up and you play it while people are up and dancing already. So if you are planning a fast set where you want people up, dancing and moving and swinging, then you leave out those red chords. If you have this at the start of the night where people are relaxing and they want a bit of a sing song, you put those chords in so it stretches the song a little bit and uh, people are more relaxed and they can take breaths and sing each line with you. So here is the difference between, between those two versions. I'll play the one with the red chords first and the one without the red chords second. So here's the first one with the red chords. I've been a wild rover for money's a year And I've spent all my money on whiskey and beer But now I'm returning with gold and great stores Sure I never will play the wild rover no more so as you can see, it was a little slower. I had time after each line to take a breath before I went into the next one. But here is the second example without those red chords and you can probably hear the speed change as well. I've been a wild rover for many's a year and I've spent most my money on whiskey and beer. Now I'm returning with gold and great store. Sure I never will play the wild rover no more. So guys, there we had the two examples. You can choose which one you want, the slower sing-along one or the fast-paced dance-along one. It is up to you. I'm gonna show you how to play them now. So I'm just gonna cover the black chords because the red chords are just additional. So in the first line, we have a G, 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 C. So it starts off with down, down, up, down, up. If you wanna get this strumming right, count to three with that strumming pattern. One, two, three. All we're doing is putting an and after the two and the three. So it goes one, two and three and. So we start off with G, one, two and three and, one, two and three and, one, two and three and, into that C chord, one, two and three and. Next line, G, D, D, G, same thing. One, two and three and, change. One, two and three and, one, two and three and, change. One, two and three and. Now I was saying the first two lines and the second two lines are almost the exact same. They are because with the third line is the same as the first line and the fourth line is the same as the second with one difference. Instead of G, D, D, G, it goes G, D, D7, G. So we'll go straight into that fourth line, G, D, D7, G. Now there's two ways you can play this. You can either go to all the chords individually like this, G, D, D7, and G. Or you can go from G straight into D7, G, I go into D7. Now what I do is I add my pinky finger onto B number three. So this changes it from D7 into D. From D into D7, just remove that pinky finger and back to G. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend this second option where you go straight from G into D7 and add your pinky finger onto B3 for two reasons. One, it means you only have to change into one chord instead of uh, D and D7. You only go into D7 and add your pinky finger. And two, it does start working with that pinky finger early because with a lot of songs, 
uh, people tend to use their first three fingers, their main fingers, and they use their pinky very rarely. But if you start using it early and then you come across more songs or tabs where you need that pinky finger, you'll have more control and more dexterity with it that you'll be able to learn the songs and play them faster. So I would recommend for beginners doing that D7 with the pinky finger uh, into a D um, chord. So go into D7 and add your pinky finger onto B, number three. That gives you D and then to change into D7, just remove that pinky finger. So that will go G that D7 with pinky, remove your pinky, and into G. And that is the entire verse, let's go into the chorus of the song now. Okay guys, for the chorus it is a little easier, we have D, D into D7, D7. Now you can play this normally and just do down, down, up, down, up for each chord, but as you can see here under the last D7 I have a down three times. So this follows the lyrics of the song. So. There are two versions of the song where you can, it says, drink down your beer or lift up your skirts. And they're just the strums. Now, as you probably guessed, there's four syllables, but only three strums, because the fourth one is actually the second line. It goes straight into that G chord. So it goes D7, 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 G into the second line. So that'd be drink down your beer. But let's start off with the song anyway. So we have D, D, just following that normal down, down, up, down, up strumming. D, D, D7, one, two, three, and then go into that G, down, down, up, down, up. So in that second line, it's G, G, C, C. Same thing again, G, G, C, C. And the very, very last bit, it goes from that C into D7. So when you're changing from C into D7, leave your first finger on, just move your middle two fingers. You have two D7s and two Gs to finish. So the hard thing to remember there is the D7 into the G from the first to second line. Um, a lot of people do D7, 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 G, but then they start the G strum pattern all over again and do down, down, up, down, up. You can't do that. You've already done your first strum, so you continue with two and three and. So it goes D, 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 G, two and three and. That's the hardest change in the chorus. Now, if that's too difficult, you can leave it out and just do down, down, up, down, up for the D7 and then go into G. But it does sound a lot better if you add in those three emphasized loud strums for the D7. So when you're playing the chorus, it should sound like this. And it's no, nay, never your beer no nay never no more will I play the wild rover no never no more and that is it that is the whole song you just go verse course first course first course there are four verses followed by a course each time and at the very very end I do a second course to finish out the song but that is it um, from me here today guys leave comments let me know what you thought of today's video if you liked it like it if you're new subscribe and as always guys i will see you next time